Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to troubleshoot a water heater, pilot assembly, and thermal pile. So this is the guts out of a standard natural draft water heater, and basically the electrical components and the gas valve itself is going to work the same, whether it's natural gas or propane, it's just running different pressures, uh, depending on if you have natural gas or propane, and the orifice size will be different, the main burner assembly, and... Uh, the inlet pressure and how it controls it inside. But electrically, it's the same thing. Now, in order to troubleshoot this, I wanna explain how it works and I'm gonna show you how it works and also show you the minimum voltage readings you need for the pilot to stay lit by itself and also for the main gas burner to turn on. Now, you can tell that this one has a thermal pile right here because of the size. So, a 750 DC millivolt thermal pile is supplying the electricity to this gas valve control. So it's not a 30 millivolt uh, DC thermocouple, it's, it's a thermal pile, otherwise known as a power pile. This one has a piezo spark ignition, and it just basically goes from here over to the spark igniter right here, and I have this assembly out already, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. So right here we have our pilot assembly, and you have your your spark igniter right here, and then you have your thermal pile and your, your pilot termination head. So this is just a stainless steel rod, and then it's surrounded by the ceramic right here, and then you have your wire coming through, and that connects over to your piezo lighter, and it's just a spark igniter. So it just comes from here, goes over to the spark igniter, and jumps across to the closest ground, and it comes back through the pilot, or basically on the pilot tube, because that's the ground, back over to the igniter in order to complete the circuit. So it's creating high voltage and it's sparking either across over to the thermal pile or the flame termination head. And that's what's going to ignite your initial pilot gas. In reference to your 750 millivolt thermal pile, you have two wires encased right here. And the only thing that's stopping the voltage that goes over to this right here, see it just connects right over to these two taps that go onto the gas valve control. This is a thermo disc, and you see it right here. It's a manual reset, and it takes 270 degrees in order for this to open. It's normally closed, so it's normally gonna allow voltage coming from the thermal pile over to this gas valve control. So the way the thermal pile works is as it gets heated up, it creates the DC millivolts and sends that over to the gas valve control. So that's proving that there is a pilot flame here and it needs to have enough in order to basically hold the solenoid down. And the solenoid is directly behind this button. So initially when you light this, you're pressing in the solenoid in order to allow gas to flow through the pilot tube and over to here. Once you have enough DC millivolts created and coming back to the gas valve, it's going to actually hold that solenoid down. And that's when you can depress it and it'll stay lit. So now, where do you take your voltage readings at? You're gonna take them right here. Uh, we could also have a problem inside this thermo disc. So you see that this is a red wire here, so you can put a multimeter on the white negative wire and then one over here. And then afterwards, you can take another reading over here and see if you have a voltage drop across this, indicating that there is a resistance across this, and that would not be necessarily good. You're only going to have a very small amount of voltage drop across this. But anyway, just doing your initial uh, check on this, I would typically go ahead and put my probes right in here. So now we have our red lead in our positive tap and our black lead in our negative tap. And we're going to go ahead and turn our multimeter on to DC millivolts. And we're going to go ahead and light our pilot. You can see we actually have a reading of 4.1 millivolts. And that's because this thermal pile was just lit. And it still is a little bit warm. But you see it's still falling. So we're going to go ahead and light this pilot. And we're going to see what voltage it takes in order for me to let go of the solenoid with my thumb. And for the pilot to stay lit. So now you see the voltage is increasing. But if I let go of this, see the, the flame kind of dies out. So we're not quite there yet. So right there, right at about 220 DC millivolts. And as soon as it held the solenoid in place, it dropped about 20 DC millivolts or so. Let's go ahead and blow this out. And we're going to see 
what DC mil volts the solenoid drops out. It's going to be lower than that 220. Uh, so I know you can't hear this right now, but the pilot is still flowing. I can show you. I can show you just by clicking this. But let's go ahead and get down to a lower DC millivolt reading. So we're down near about 100 DC millivolts, and I just want to show you that the pilot is still flowing. So let's go ahead and, and let it go down further. And right about there. So right about 100 is when it stops. See, I can press that, and uh, it's no longer holding. So on these, it, it may hold down to maybe 50 DC millivolts to maybe 125 DC millivolts when the solenoid lets go for the pilot, but it's somewhere around in there. So that would be in the case of maybe high wind or something like that blowing your pilot out, that's the, the DC millivolts it's going to uh, drop the solenoid at. Now we're going to go ahead and see what voltage it takes for the main burners to turn on and for them to cut out. So let's go ahead and relight our pilot. As soon as we have enough uh, DC millivolts to hold this pilot valve in, I'm going to turn it, the main burners on. There it is. So we're at 215, 235. So right at about 260, you saw, is when the main burners lit. And then they actually dropped down about 30 DC millivolts while the load was occurring. And now we're still climbing because our thermal power is continuing to heat up. Let's go ahead and put this in here in order to stop the heat from going to the thermal pile. And let's see when the main burner is cut out. So right there, right at about 160 or so, that's when the main burner is dropped out. So you see you have to have at least 225 DC millivolts in order for the main burner to, to power. And that's also while the thermal power is supplying voltage to this solenoid for the pilot as well. And you see that if you were to, to lose a flame, it's going to cut out the main burners as well just for safety. So it's not just pouring gas in there. Now let's, let's watch the main burners turn back on. So right at about 220, and then you saw it drop down a little bit. So what I wanted you to get out of all this is just to make sure that you have enough DC millivolts generated in order for everything to operate correctly and not intermittently. Uh, if you have only a low DC millivolts generated by the, the thermal pile, then sometimes you're not going to be able to power your main burners. And that could happen just due to, say, carbon on the outside of this, and you can clean that with unsoaped steel wool so you go ahead and take this assembly out and clean it just like this and you do want to make sure that you blow this um, pilot termination head out because if you get little pieces of this in there that could foul that up so you make sure you blow this out after cleaning this or take your thermal pile out completely but if it is clean and you do have a flame enveloping the thermal pile and you have low dc millivolts and this is not a problem, then you need to go ahead and replace your thermopile. Before you replace your thermopile, just make sure that you, you have the same voltage when testing like this as you do when testing like this. Because basically, you could have a high resistance value across this, and this could be the problem. So you just need to make sure that you're, you have the correct DC millivolts, and you want to be somewhere around 5 to 600 millivolts or maybe a little higher than that while your pilot flame is lit and your solenoid is energized for your pilot. Of course, you could have other problems such as your pilot tube right here. Your head might be deformed and bent back and the flame is not enveloping this. Or you could have low gas pressure or you could have a clog in your pilot tube or a clog at your pilot termination head. You could have loose wiring connections. You could possibly have too large of an exhaust and maybe wind blowing out your pilot so it keeps blowing out your pilot flame that could be an issue your gas valve control could be bad itself so there's a number of issues that 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 could be the problem but most of the time is actually 
your thermal pile itself or the flame not enveloping the thermal pile or that the thermal pile is not clean. If you're looking for the multimeter and the thermal pile used in the video, I have them both linked in the description section below along with other troubleshooting videos for thermal piles and thermocouples. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.